Hi, welcome to Twisted Wave 101. My name is Mike. In this video, we're going to talk about interface shortcuts, ways to get around your Twisted Wave application a little bit faster. As you start to record, you'll often use your mouse heavily to move up to buttons in the interface, like play and stop, rewind, zoom in, zoom out. But as you start to record more, you'll want to speed up your workflow and get through recording audio, and especially editing audio, a little quicker. So today we're going to go through some shortcuts to help you do that. I've assembled a few files on my desktop to the right, which we're going to use to cut, copy, and paste. And I'm also going to record some copy because we're going to go through an option called Special Paste today in Twisted Wave. So let's get started. First off, I have my microphone, which is a USB microphone, already plugged into my computer. It's indicated with a blue light that it's on. And now I'm safe to go ahead and open Twisted Wave. I'm going to open up a program, or a file rather, just to show you about cut, copy, and paste. So we'll open up a gas phone prompt here that was recorded. Please enter. First off, in any audio or video application, the space bar is always start and stop playback. So often, my thumb or fingers are hovering over the mouse if I'm on a laptop, or if I'm on a regular keyboard, my left hand is hovering over the space bar, and on the laptop, my fingers are hovering over the space bar. It's very often that you'll move around the timeline Distance. and play Distance. something very Perfect. quickly to review what you need to do. So first off, cut, copy, and paste. Those options always exist up in the edit menu, and you can see cut, copy, and paste here map to Command X, Command C, and Command V. And for you people with older keyboards, that relates to Apple X, Apple C, and Apple V. This is a global Mac shortcut, so you can use it in Microsoft Word or the web browser or any other application you use. It's very simple. Uh, to copy, you would highlight some audio, Command C to copy, and you could place your cursor anywhere else and hit Command V to paste that. Editing audio is a lot like editing a Microsoft Word document. You are actually cutting and copying and pasting all throughout the document to replace sections, especially if you record separate takes in different places, which we'll do in just a second. Copy leaves the original alone and replaces it somewhere else, whereas if I hit undo, cut, which is Command X, actually takes it, puts it on the clipboard, and then I can put it somewhere else. I tend to cut most of the time because I don't want to leave the audio for me to go back and edit later on. Paste, of course, is Command V. So I can, with Command C, copy, and then Command V, and paste that audio somewhere else. Let's do that now. This was a take for the gas company, a phone prompt, and it was never slated. And it turns out I have a slate in a separate file. And if I move over to my desktop, I have a file called slate here. Let's replace this slate, or actually add the slate to this take and also to another take. So I'll open up Slate. I will copy this with Command-C, or by going up to Edit and Copy. Go back to my other take. Use the Back button to send my cursor to the very beginning. And go ahead and with Command-V, paste that in. Resvar, please enter the account number. Your there we go. Pretty good. I have another take on my desktop as well. I'm going to go ahead and close this Slate take because it's already on my clipboard. And I will open up a take called Brinker here. And I will send my cursor back to the beginning. And again, with Command V, paste in that audio. Welcome to the Brinker fa So that I have a slate. Pretty good. All right, so that covers cut, copy, and paste. Sometimes when we're editing, we want to zoom in. And that's a function that you'll do all the time when you start to edit audio. And that's accomplished by two buttons in the interface. Zoom in, which moves to the cursor and zoom out. One thing to notice here is the pink area up in the map or universe window. Right now it's a one-to-one -one relationship between the top and the bottom. Whatever you see up here is what you see down below. Wherever I put my cursor and zoom into, you'll see that the pink starts to shrink down, which gives me an indication of where I am in the entire file. It's also very quick to move that pink by grabbing and dragging it around the interface to maybe grab some room tone at the end or maybe to take a piece from here and copy that and put it up front. This is also very helpful if you record audiobooks in Twisted Wave because it gives you an indication of how much time you are through the file when you're editing something as long as maybe an hour or 45 minutes. So to zoom in and out with the keyboard, we hit the Command Plus, which is Zoom In, and you can continually hit it to keep zooming in, and Command Minus, 
to zoom out. Again, up here, zoom in, zoom out, or Command plus, Command minus. I find myself going for Command plus and minus all the time. Then there are times when I want to edit the room tone of a file, the very quiet area, and it's difficult for me to see. You can see that there's some stuff happening down here. If I were to highlight this area and play, you might or might not have heard that. For me to get a better picture of what that looks like, I like to vertically zoom, which means to zoom in vertical so that the waveforms blow up so I can see the quiet parts. That is accomplished by clicking and pushing up the vertical zoom option here. And I often do this before I edit, and it's good practice. Clicking it once brings you back down and back to normal zoom. I actually use the shift and up arrow to do the same thing. And of course the shift and down arrow. Interestingly, I can zoom lower than I'm supposed to, indicated by the blue lines on the top and bottom of my waveform, meaning that the zero dBFS range is now truncated to this line and there's extra dead space up here. Of course, to bring that back, you can click on vertical zoom and it'll bring you back to normal. So a normal practice for me would be to go and zoom in, highlight a section of clean room tone, copy that to my clipboard, move over to the section with a little bit less clean room tone. And let me zoom out to see if I can figure that out. There it is, we'll zoom in. And then with shift up, I will vertically zoom in and then I will highlight the area that I wanna get rid of and command V for paste. Now it's truncated it to the size of my room tone. In this case, that's probably okay. We'll listen back. Centers, press three for up to date. Works for me. All right, so that's vertical zoom, zoom in and zoom out. We've covered cut, copy, and paste. Now we come to a function called undo, which is very helpful as you'll do things and then need to undo them as you listen to them. Let's say I need to cut space out of this area and I accidentally have truncated my word. Press two. Okay. By going up to edit and undo, I can undo that, or I can go to the button here, undo, or in Mac, as we look at the option up here, undo is related to, whoops, excuse me, undo is related to command Z. And then redo is shift command Z. Here it is, shift command Z, which also relates to this button here. So with command Z on my keyboard, I can bring that back. Press two. What if I like that? Shift command Z, redoes that mistake. Press two. Undo again. What if I wanted to take out some silence here? Listen to that. Press two. For information. Hmm, maybe we needed a little bit less silence, so I undo that. And I grab a little more. Press two for inf ah, undo again. Maybe I want a little bit more silence. Press two for information. Hmm, that might be nice. Brings us all to, to the edit points of the last delete. Anytime you make a deletion anywhere in the program, you get these options up here, which allow you to drag in and out the audio variably and even go underneath the audio if you'd like to do that. Just scrub under all the way back to the original post edit and or pre edit, sorry, and all the way up into underneath from both sides. It's kind of handy there. Press two for it. So that's undo and redo. Another option you might be using a lot is markers. We'll zoom out. Maybe this is multiple takes. We might want to drop a marker here. We might want to drop a marker here. And we might want to drop a marker here to indicate different takes. That's helpful. How you do that is with the M key, M for marker. And then we can name these by double clicking and calling them good take one and moving down to good take two. Maybe this marker was actually not supposed to be there. How to get rid of it? We click and we drag it into the interface and it disappears. That's markers. Now let's move to a function called special paste. And for this, I'm gonna actually record some audio so that I can show you what it looks like. So special paste is a great function that's allowed in Twisted Wave and also programs like Pro Tools that allow you to paste in sections of audio that you've copied over and over again from the clipboard. To show you this, let's go ahead and create a new session 
and I will record the audio that I have in the 7-Eleven copy below. A standard practice for someone who's doing an audition would be to record their slate and then a couple takes of the copy and then go back and actually clean up the copy for mouth ticks, noises, larger breaths, and things like that. So I'm going to demonstrate that by recording this very quickly. So it's two o'clock in the morning and you're starving. Nothing in the fridge and nothing in the cupboards. You don't even have dog biscuits hanging around. You think about cooking, but then you remember the 3 a.m. alarm fire you started last time you tried using the stove. <clears throat> well, check out 7-Eleven. There's got to be one right near you. They have everything from burgers to tacos 24 hours a day, se se seven days a week. 7-Eleven. Think of it as your own personal walk-in kitchen. It's very common for me to record a good three to five seconds of room tone at the beginning or the end to use that to cut and copy throughout the piece of script that I've recorded. So to set up special paste, let's first go into the edit menu and do that. Let's go up to edit, special paste options, and we have a couple options here, insert, mix, or replace. Now, these can be used in different cases. Insert might be that you need to insert something like a slate or something else throughout the entire piece of copy, in which case copy and paste would work fine for that as well. Sometimes you need to mix, and there are people who actually mix room tone over very, very clean copy for audiobooks. I don't suggest it, um, but it's a practice that you can do. Um, and then what we're interested in here is replace. So replace is kind of where we want to be as we want to replace sections of our clipboard throughout the piece of copy. The auto options here are fade document and fade clipboard, which is great. I usually set my MS or milliseconds of my fade to five as I get, I get pretty tight with my fades. The important part of this window is bringing your attenuation, which was probably somewhere up near zero or three, all the way down to 99 or rather infinum down here which means I want to completely, by this diagram which is showing, I want to completely replace the section that I've selected with the selection on my clipboard. So with all of this selected, let's go ahead and hit OK. To show you this in demonstration, let's go ahead and copy some of our clipboard, but before we do that, let's vertically zoom up to see if we have some nice clean clipboard or room tone here. This is room tone. And let's go ahead and highlight a selection of that. And if we look up at selection length here, you can see that it's around three seconds. I'm going to copy this to my clipboard with Command C. And then I'm going to move my cursor all the way to the beginning of the take and start to go down and edit. So it's two o'clock in the morning and you're starving. Nothing in the okay, now let me show you the way that most people would do this in other editors. They would first highlight the area that they don't want and they would hit Command V to paste that in, shoving the audio, the duration of the clipboard, and then they would cut this down to space, giving them a nice duration. You're starving. Nothing in the fridge. Okay, again we can bring these little carrot areas in here to subtract area if we needed to. And you're starving. Nothing. That's okay, and that works pretty well in some programs. However, with a undo, command Z and command Z, let me show you the power of special paste. Let's go ahead and zoom into the selection that we want to get rid of, and we can now just highlight the section that we don't want up to what I have on my clipboard, which happens to be three seconds, and you can see this selection here is just over a second. And with the command Y, which is the shortcut for special paste, I can paste in the duration of exactly what I wanted. Or starving. Nothing in the fridge. Okay. So that's pretty powerful. I can select an area that's as short as that. I can select an area that's as long as that. And I can select an area all the way up into about three seconds, which is long as that. And with Command Y, replace that as well. So that saves me a lot of time as I move down. Nothing in the fridge and nothing in the cupboards. You don't even have dog biscuits hanging around. All right, so in this case, I might highlight this with Command Y, replace, special paste. I also might delete some of this out because I took a big breath. It's hanging around. You think about cooking, but then you remember the 3 a.m. alarm fire you started last time you tried using the stove. <clears throat> well, OK, 
Okay, there's another indication that I should replace that. Command Y to special paste. Well, check out 7-Eleven. There's got to be one right near you. They have everything from burgers to tacos, 24 hours a day. Set. set. Okay, here's a basic edit. So I'm going to highlight this area all the way up to this word because this is 7 and this is 7. 7 days a week. 7-Eleven. Think of it as your own personal walk-in kitchen. And then we have the end here, which I will cut out. Now I forgot to record my slate. I'm going to go back to the beginning with the back button. I'm going to hit record. Mike Varela. There we go. I'll cut out the beginning. And we have a full take, except you see there's a little tick right here. So with the clipboard still my room tone, I can replace that area with command. Whoops, excuse me. That was command V with command Y. Varela. So it's... Okay, let's go ahead and zoom all the way out and hit vertical zoom once and that's a take, ready to go. So that's special paste. Remember in the edit selection for special paste options, you need to have replace chosen here and the most important part is the attenuation needs to be down at infinim or 99.99. .99. So what if we wanted to use markers to select multiple parts of a take and then separate those out with multiple takes? Well, it turns out we can do that in Twisted Wave. Let me go ahead and open up a file that has multiple takes in it. This was three takes that were done in the studio. So we have... Welcome to the... Okay, and... Welcome to the... Okay, and... Welcome... Now, what if these were three different takes, three different styles, you wanted to send all three of these to the client, or they wanted them separately because they might want to use ones at different times? If this is a phone prompt, which it is, maybe there is a day, night, and holiday prompt in here. That's very easy by going up to Select and detect silences. Now you might have simple mode showing here, which is fine. I tend to go into expert mode. And how to select your silences is based on the threshold. So you can see I can decrease or I can actually increase with more silences as I grow. I'm interested in the two large spaces between the three takes. So I'm gonna move my threshold until that gets selected. And then we have a couple options down here. One, I can select the sounds, which are the takes themselves or I can select the silences. I'm gonna go ahead and select silences. Then we have a couple options here to select the silences, select the sounds, place markers, delete silences, which is helpful sometimes, or delete silences and mark. I'm just gonna place, well, I'm gonna delete silences and mark. So by hitting apply, I've deleted that. It's auto dropped a couple markers, including one at the very top, which is nice. And then up in an option, Let's go to markers and split by markers. It's pulled in my three marker locations into three separate files. I can number the files if I want. That's helpful as well, especially if you've named the marker something. I can change the location of where I want to save these. And I can, of course, change my format as well. In this case, let's change this to MP3. And I will hit OK. Now. The program comes up and says metadata is not supported. Anytime you're working in Twisted Wave and you drop a marker, you're dropping a marker in a location to let you know where something is. But in effect, what you're doing is dropping metadata into the B-Wave or broadcast wave file saying that there's a marker location here. The MP3 format does not support, uh, support metadata and it won't carry over. So in this case, when you go ahead and hit OK, you're going to lose the marker locations, which is OK because we're splitting by marker. And when you open them back up, you won't see those again. That's fine for what we're doing, so I'm going to hit OK. It exports the three files. And if I close this and look on my desktop, you'll see that I have part one, part two, and part three. And if we open one up, you'll see that it's been split correctly just for the single take. Now, that's not helpful in a lot of different cases, but there are some cases when you do lots of different takes, especially things for phone prompts, video games, um, web prompts, instructional videos, where you need to record lots of small groupings of audio and you need those split out by different areas. In that case, the uh, select by marker and export or split by marker will work really, really well. And that's it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.